And I was not myself last night Couldn't set things right with apologies or flowers Welcome to a new video. Finally back making my Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me video after almost a year promising you guys, but I wanted some time to re-watch the movie and re-watch the show actually before talking with you guys again. Also, I'm here with my two friends who just watched the show, so it was perfect timing. Uh, they also just watched the movie just Amazing. a couple days ago. Fish, the return just a couple days ago as well. That's how much we loved it. We yeah. binged it. Just and every day we would just kind of watch episode after episode. That's that's how yeah. good we like. Long how day after school, it. just go watch an episode too. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's just because it's not super long the episodes, the, the original then, show. No, it, an episode or two turns into five episodes. Yeah, <laughs> it's an addiction, honestly. But the whole show is very like just excellently paced too. Like, oh yeah. You feel like you know you're not wasting time and everything is nope. happening and it's just it until was, season two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about that after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a very laid back show, too. <laughs> it is. Like, you can kind of just chill and watch it, which it, I like. The thing about the show is that it's laid back, but it's also intense when it needs to be. Exactly. exactly. It's, yeah. it, it always has these moments that are just like, you know, you feel like you're safe, and then all of a sudden something happens that's like, yes. oh my god, like that. You yeah. did not expect that. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. But that is and David Lynch, you know. Creepy, uh, I don't know, for that time and the area. Like, oh, yeah, nothing came out like in, that. Nothing, nothing came out like that. No. And no. I like how uh, Bob, you know, like Frank Silva, how you can see him in the first episode and he wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah. It just, That's it ties together. Good. Didn't you tell me Twin Peaks was originally, like, hated too? Like, people didn't like it? Or was it... That was more the movie. The show, no, the show was actually well received okay. right away. Hmm. Like, it... It, again, like if you watch a video we just re recently watched on YouTube, they were saying that um, the show did so well at first, but then right yeah. season two, halfway through, it plummeted down. Oh, yeah. And that's why the show had to get canceled. No kidding, because of the ratings and everything? Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. And they had to, they actually moved the date for the episodes for Saturday nights where everyone's out, so then no one watched it. And in case, yeah. uh, you know, people don't know, David Lynch left literally for what? Uh, to do like, uh, Wild at Heart? Wild at Heart to do like the press tours and stuff. Yeah, so the director basically kind of abandoned the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then the cast got mad at him for it. Yep, yeah, everyone was mad. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you want to give up the plot for the original show? Original show. So, Laura Palmer murdered. Yep. Dale Cooper comes in. But he's not what you see. He's very quirky. Uh, quirky, but yet again, he he seems like he knows things. You yeah. know, you know his Tibetan knowledge, how he uses that dream, exactly, and yeah. it all ties together. They like going to go see Jay. Yeah, it makes me think that. So he starts off with it's kind of supernatural things, right? Mm -hmm. So it makes you think that is it gonna be setting the like show like that supernatural? You, you never know. For that. Yeah, and then. You hear about this character Bob, mm -hmm. and then you see this like the flashes of him, and you think he's a real person until yeah, until you find out other things, other things down, and, and then, then it, it gets, gets better good. again. So <laughs> yeah. like it's it's a crazy show. I still think it's all worth watching. It at is least once. It is yeah. Like some of it sucks. Like the whole was it just James scenes? Oh man, kind of oh, sucked. Yeah. Who made the Do we... episode again? Diane Keenan. Diane Keenan. I got I got so mad that I. Uh, Sent our text on Instagram. <laughs> that was. But yeah, needless to say, even those episodes that do get bad, they're not terrible. You know. No, they're, no, they're they're still like they're fun. They're fun. Yeah. The, the story still matters. They're it's, comforting. Um, it just feels like out of place. It's it's yeah. out of place, and it's definitely like you can see the difference. It yeah. doesn't like, seem Whoa. Twin Peak. No, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't. It exactly. Makes, it's, it, it felt like something that Twin Peaks was actually trying to make fun of, the soap opera yeah. era and stuff, and that's what it became. Kind it of became the bit. cliches, exactly. Yeah, yeah it did. Sadly. And that was the issue. I think that's why David Lynch kind of left, because he was kind of pissed about that. Because he had to give away who the killer was, and him and Mark Frost both didn't want that. Whoa, that they, it was, was it another control or something? Yeah, the ABC, I think, was the company that made them. Wow. They're like, oh, people are wanting it, so you gotta give it to them. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. So I can't stupid. Know. Yeah, because they never won and put out who the killer was, actually. But sometimes it's like you gotta trust the process. Yeah, exactly. But a lot of people won't do that. No, no. no. Ray Wise was uh, very upset to find out that he was the killer, actually. No, he... Because he, he has a daughter. 
So he was oh, really upset that so he found out that he, like the whole he did story. all those bad things. Yeah. yeah. And obviously people watching the show know that the subject matter behind all that yeah. is uh, dis- really That's disturbing. another crazy thing. The subject matter of the show and even some of the scenes are just crazy for, for like public TV back in the yeah. day. Insane. It deals with like murder and just a whole bunch of other like horrible kind of things. Yeah. It's, but it's crazy. But you'd be surprised because the atmosphere of the show doesn't really convey that message that it's completely terrible or anything. I know. It, like it's so goofy yeah. and just crazy sometimes. It has that lighthearted it does still, which yeah. is really nice in the front in the in the forward of it with like Dale Cooper and stuff and some of the other side characters like Pete and Nadine yeah. and Ed and Norma like, Ed and all these characters are just so likable that's that's the thing too like we say the show is about Laura Palmer and of course it is, it is. It's, it's, but it's 100% what happens within the town of Twin Peaks yeah, yeah. It, it's their reaction after her death every character has their own storyline that's related to Laura or themselves everyone yeah, exactly. has like a scandal everyone has some sort of like Supernatural weirdness. Not everyone, but like you know, most characters have something to make the show kind of what it is. It's telling the supernatural. Yeah, exactly. It's about Twin Peaks, really. Yeah. Well, that was the thing is that Laura Palmer's death was kind of the tree, and all these side things were kind of the branches, like the roots and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And that's what made the the plot so interesting. That's why David Lynch didn't want to put out who the killer was because. After you cut off that tree, then what do you have? You just have yeah. a dead plant. Well, it's great, and it, yeah, they do it in a way where it's yeah, exactly, yeah. And it's, it's funny with nothing. because you think with like a huge storyline like that, it could be so convoluted, which it does seem sometimes. But it all makes sense. You're paying oh, yeah. attention. You're watching it. It all makes sense. Sometimes, and it's brilliantly done. You know. Sometimes it feels like you're watching a fever dream. You know. Of course. Oh, 100 yeah. percent. I think that's what David Lynch meant to do. Yeah. Some of the characters, like in season two of The Old Man, the beginning. Oh my God. He was a fever dream, like the guy that Great became scene. the giant. Yeah. 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 Really awesome. Um, also, every character matters, basically. Yeah. Kind of so Just every character, it's crazy. I think this is the like one of the only shows that has so many characters in it, like probably twenty. Without a doubt. And yeah. you like almost all of them, or they're at least. Like, they do a good job flowing the show with all these characters. Absolutely. Everyone kind of like, goes off. I don't know any other show that has that many characters that are that important to the plot. No, because, like, even things like The Sopranos yeah. and The Wire and stuff was all about the main characters. Yeah, yeah. it's like, what, you know, eight people or something like eight, that? Eight people like that. And I'm not dissing those shows. They're no, excellent. No. Excellent, yeah. but, you crazy. know. But this is just crazy that they could do that at that time, especially. Amazing. You know, and people still stayed to watch well, it every day. It, it well, felt like a, you know... The thing is, with The Sopranos, <clears throat> Tony Soprano is the main character every episode, but in mm-hmm. Twin Peaks, it's Dale Cooper, and sometimes it might be Ed or Bobby. Or Harry. Or Harry. Harry or or Josie. Josie. Josie was playing. Yeah. Josie. Karen. Yeah. Especially so, Karen. Yeah, Karen is a... that That's the only, like, story I really cared about in part, in season two, and with that, a, for the second half, was Karen's. Actually, yeah, honestly, yeah. it was it was super yeah. strong, kind of. Yeah, because, like, her and uh, Pete and everything... It actually felt engaging with Josie and stuff like that. It did. What, even it, though I didn't really like Josie. No, Josie's yeah, not my favorite character either. Kind of, uh, <laughs> B-I-T-C-H a little bit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> thing. But Karen is like fucking badass, even though she kind of was evil. Yeah. She was. Like, she was evil, but like she was interesting and she actually yeah. sometimes did heroic things like saving, um, was it Shelly from the fire? The fire in the that was an awesome milk. scene. Yeah, and she could have easily not done that. Yeah, too. exactly. <laughs> she saved her. She didn't even know who that was. Yeah. That was another thing. A lot of characters in this town don't even know who the hell they are. It's a town where people go to uh, leave their past behind. Just like Laura Palmer, you know? Yeah. She was trying to escape, you know? She was trying to run away from her parents, her lives. But she couldn't, you know. Well, it's funny because even the character they bring in, uh, I think Madeline or Maddie or whatever her name is, right? The Who's cousin. Oh, the cousin. The cousin. cousin. The cousin. She's remember? she's such an excellent addition to the cast, but she just ends up becoming, you know. Well, more that's like, another thing. Yeah. When right. they're when uh, they're singing that terrible song. Yeah. The one with James. The you and I. The just you. And I. Yeah, you and I. The best part about that scene is when. Everything goes quiet, and she sees Bob come around the corner. Oh, and come incredible. Towards her. That was freaky. Yeah. yeah. Really good but, shot. But then it's like, so it runs in the family then. Because they yeah. can all see him. Yeah. Yep. In the family. Laura, Maddie, um, even Sarah. David Lynch accidentally filmed one of the stunt coordinators, yeah. Frank Silva. And he thought it was perfect that shot in the mirror. It looked creepy. That he was like, "Hey, you want to be in the show?" And then he was like, "Yeah, why not?" And he became the villain, Bob himself. And he's so inc- iconic now. Mm-hmm. 
him and um, Leland are like super iconic super, members. Yeah, that's Actually, crazy. That made me upset a little bit in uh, season two. He wasn't shown that much. I know he's like, we'll get we'll get to the part in a second. Yeah, it's just they could have done more with him. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I think he disappeared for a bit because again the plot kind of circled away from it for a bit. And you yeah. gotta remember they introduced the new villain too, which yeah. is that's Wyndham true. Earl. Win- Wyndham Earl. Yeah, Wyndham, Wyndham Earl. Wyndham. Wyndham, Wyndham. Wyndham Earl is a fantastic villain. Yeah. Great he's actor. So much fun. He's funny. He's uh, crazy. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's a little goofy. He, he he felt like he was part of the Twin Peaks. Uh, <laughs> Town, Without you know? a doubt, yeah. And, but it goes to show, like even in the goofiness, like like we were talking about earlier, how the darkness really starts to show too, because he's kind of a psycho, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, a complete psycho. Crazy. And psycho how path. he was just like abusing Leo, just like how Leo was like abusing Shelley, you know? Yeah, yeah like Frankenstein. Without stuff. a doubt. And Leo could see that what he's done to Shelly now is being terrible because you can see that he started feeling bad for Shelly that he didn't want Shelly to die yeah Leo the worst one of the most kind of like really evil characters as well to be honest has like a bit of a change like he knows what he's doing is wrong even if he's in that state you know but he didn't get to do anything about it he died rip yeah (laughs) Yeah. but yeah I feel like we've kind of said enough about the original show to jump into what we want to talk about today yes um so Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me it Yes. Basically, I was really excited to watch it. I know a lot of people back in the day were kind of pissed off at David Lynch because they were thinking they were going to finally get a ending to the How's Annie ending. How's Annie? Oh, Annie, yes. yes yeah. Because yes, yeah. the ending of the movie, of the show of season two is basically Dale Cooper leaving the Black Lodge. Mm-hmm. And um, they think that it's normal Dale, but actually it was uh, his doppelganger. His doppelganger. Yeah. And it was Bob possessing the doppelganger, mm-hmm. and uh, it just ends like that, and we don't know anything else after that. That's crazy. What a! I imagine growing up in that time, and that's your ending kind of. Thing. Yeah, and that's like, all you get. You know, like I would be so like angry. Yeah, and you go to the movie theaters to go see Fire Walk with Me, and you don't get anything really other because than that one dream sequence. It's a prequel, basically. No, yeah. that's important to talk about. This like Twin Peaks Fire Walk with Me was not well received upon when it really. It was not. Least. People it, hated it. It has like a sixty-eight percent around tomatoes. Yeah. Because yeah. No one really liked it back in the day. I know Roger Ebert hated it. Um, but he hates everything. He hates everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but David Lynch likes to screw with his audiences. You know, he wants people to yep. have anticipation for something. Yep. And that he did. <laughs> but then he wants to make you wait for the anticipation. You know oh. I mean? He wants you to be anticipated for a long time. And that's a whole 25 years now before the return. Now, keep in mind, too, we're all, like, all of us are pretty young, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, including me. <laughs> but, uh, but basically, like, imagine growing up in the time... Like, we probably have a different perspective on this film because we have... Because of the way we, we grow up. We, well, not like that. We had the return, you know? Yeah. We, we, we know what happens, and we have stuff That's to look true. forward to afterwards. So it's different for us, without a doubt. Exactly. But, yeah. you know, it's it, it doesn't really distract from the fact that, in all honesty, this was a great... It, it's a, also it's a phenomenal movie. Another thing is, with the original show, when it came out, people were watching it, yada, yada, yada. Then Fire Walk With Me came out. Yeah. And then they didn't think too much of it. But now with us, we're here and the return, right? You need to watch this for the Absolutely. return, so we appreciated it more. 100%. But people didn't know back then that 25 year, years later, it's going to come back. This is thought. They, they just thought it was, a, it was like a line from a movie. They thought yeah. that it was 25 years later. Like, oh, so the movie's going to be 25 years later, probably set 25 years later. 100%. Because yeah. they did have the old person makeup they did. in the show. Yeah. But they didn't do anything about it. No, literally. David Lynch purposely was going to make three movies, I'm pretty sure. Oh, really? And because Fire Walk With Me didn't do well, he didn't get to make his sequels to the show. No. So it's kind of the audience's fault. We would have gotten those movies that would have ended the show. Yeah. But honestly, I'm kind of glad now that the movies didn't happen because we got The Return. We got The Return. Yeah, which yeah. is like literally a better version than probably any of his movies he's going to make. Honestly, it is. It's, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's so different to the original show. Oh, it's very different because yeah. you can't do that kind of stuff in movie form or even new form. You, know? yeah. you can't do soap operas. No, God, no. <laughs> soap operas don't work anymore. No one's going to watch a soap opera. Um, like, I don't. I, I think any show that's getting rebooted now is basically changed a bit. Mm-hmm, yeah. uh, like the Grassy High and stuff like that. That was a soap opera. They can't do that anymore. Like the subject matter of this is still important to this day, exactly. obviously. But, but it's, it's great. David Lynch, just just like Firewalk Me, The Return, he was actually able to do more than less than the original absolute, show. Absolutely. He was able to do graphic violence. He was able to do nudity. He was able to do so much more stuff 
with this new show. Yes. Because the original show is a PG, public access, like, and you can watch it. You could get in trouble with the network and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, but somehow he was still able to get go pretty far with it. Like, he, kids could watch oh. that show, and they probably got scared. Oh, but, it, it holds yeah. up, without a doubt. Yeah. I can fully say that this movie is not meant for kids. This is no, a full-on, mature, R-rated film. And yeah. it's beautiful in so many ways. It is. Um, it's um, the Red Room, uh, amazing scene in the movie, but the music. Oh, music by Angelo Benalimity is just incredible. Yeah. All of this Twin Peaks music. I think that was some of the best part of the show. It oh, was. Without a doubt. Said. Every yeah. scene that was emotional, that had that beautiful theme song play, oh. and just, he oh my an God. incredible job. And of course, uh, the singer, Julie Cruz, she does a lot of the singing parts at the, the double She R. does. Yeah. Rest in peace Sorry, to the, her. She, Oh, she's passed? She's passed away. Yeah, yeah, she passed away. Recently. But really good singer. She got to come back for Firewalk With Me and The Return. Yeah. And she does such a good job. Oh, my goodness. Singing her a bunch of the songs that are incredible. Killer um, vocalist, yeah. Oh, yeah. really good. So basically, Fire, uh, Fire Walk With Me starts off um, like it, a kind of a regular Twin Peaks episode. Kind yeah. Of. Very comedic, uh, but at the same time, it is very different to the town of Twin Peaks. It is. It's uh, Where is it? Again, it, it's some sort of Washington oh, uh, place. It's, it's still Washington State. It's just, it's like a town old from right, Twin Peaks. Right yeah. Here. And it's like opposite. Yeah. Because if you think about it, um, the, the new characters, you see Chester Desmond and Sam Stanley. Uh, Chester Desmond, CD, and then Dale Cooper, DC. Well, so it's yeah. switched. The beauty about this movie is it starts off just like Laura Palmer with a different girl. Who gets exactly. Murdered. This is with Teresa Banks. Teresa Banks. Then, so yes, it starts with um, the two FBI agents yep. that are working on just a random mystery thing, like a. It's these, a, we just see a school bus. It's like so comedic. Yeah. <laughs> it was so it's weird. It's so yeah. comedic, and these girls are like all crying and they're all yeah. getting handcuffed and stuff. <laughs> it's so weird. And then but Gordon funny. Hall calls, you know, David Lynch, and he's fantastic in it as well. I love David Lynch as Gordon Hall. He is incredible. Without um, a doubt. Yeah. So, yeah, this is kind of where the mystery kind of starts. Yeah, it starts off with these two new detectives Chester Desmond, yeah. played by uh, musician Chris Isaac, who, and the, who I love. Sam Stanley. He's great. And, and Sam Stanley, played by Kiefer Sutherland, yeah. who is, uh, you know, just. Uh, just a great actor. He's been in a lot of stuff. Like so many things like Flatliners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lost Boys. Stand, oh, by, yeah. me. Stand oh, by Me. Stand By Me. Stand By Me. He's a great actor. I love him. Um, and they do a really great job like playing off each other. Without yeah. a doubt, yeah. Chris Isaac very much is like that Dale uh, Cooper character because Kyle MacLachlan was actually supposed to play that character. Which is crazy, yeah. Uh, uh, Dale Cooper was supposed to be that character, but because... He was kind of pissed off at David Lynch. He said, no, I, won't, I don't want to be in your movie. Yeah. Which he did end up being in it for a bit. And his scene was excellent in it. Yeah. yeah I think, it worked. Yeah, but, he, didn't, he didn't need to be in this one too much. But but David Lynch's, like, you know, like you said, kind of alternative to that was to get Chester Desmond, CD, which is Chester Desmond, opposite of Dale Cooper, this yeah. opposite character, which is kind of yeah. hilarious in all honesty. Yeah. And he's just like Dale Cooper. Minus, he's just a grumpier He's version. just a grumpier, more yeah. kind of, like, to the point kind of guy. Yeah. yeah. And it's and it's great. A it's lesser great. Albert, if you could think about it like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, all and, part of the Blue Rose Task Force. And, yeah, yeah. So yeah. again, Blue Rose. Yeah. And they're basically given a Blue Rose task. We don't know what a Blue Rose is until they return, so we yeah, won't be we talking won't, about that exactly. too much. But um, it's something supernatural, basically. Yeah. Uh, well, we pretty much come off of this. Yeah. Um, and so they find out that this girl Teresa Banks dies in this town that's mm-hmm. nearby Twin Peaks and. They don't know how the murder happened, but they're kind of investigating. They find it that she lived at this trailer park. Yep. That's owned by Harry Dinsden, of course. Oh, yeah. uh, Carl Rod. Great character. Yep. yep. Really character. funny character again. <laughs> you can tell that he improvised. He, his character is like kind of like whiny and complainy, but it, yeah. it's so funny. It's like but it's so it's done well. Whiny and complainy and Harry Dinsden. Like, oh, it's uh, to do work kind of stuff. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he's just the whole the whole opening is is excellent. Oh, sense, it's you know. it's a great opening. They uh, work off each other, Kiefer keep, Sutherland and Chris Isaac. Yep. Um, and then bringing in like kind of the mystery where they go to that trailer park and they see, um, 
was it uh, the the car that says "Let's Rock" on it and stuff? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We get to that scene a little bit later for sure when it's kind of like you know it's implied that his character is sort of never seen again kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but of course, like before that, they have like a lot of you know they're on their own quest, which is awesome. Sort of yeah. Thing. Yeah. So basically, it starts off with a murder from Teresa Banks, just like how. The pilot starts off with the Laura Palmer Laura murder, and this yeah. this is great too because not you know a lot about Laura Palmer as the show goes yeah. on. Teresa exactly. Banks is almost kind of like you know obviously it's dead, so but yeah, they like, talked about her a bit and how like the murder murder seems kind of similar. That's why Dale Cooper came to check Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks, yeah. yeah. But really, Teresa Banks isn't like you know you don't really know anything about her. She's just the no. first dead body that starts this. Really, yeah. she's the same know. kind of death. She was found up in the water, just like in Laura Palmer. Yep, in, bag in a plastic bag. Yep, um, same evidence. Uh, yeah, they found a, a letter underneath her. Letter T. It was T. Yeah. It was T. It was it was R or T. No, it was or, T. Yeah. T. Yeah. It was nasty that scene actually. Oh yeah, disgusting. It was disgusting. I hate that scene. <laughs> but there's some good practical effects in this. Yeah. In this oh film, yeah. For sure, that was like really cool actually. It was. Um, it made you feel like you're watching a cop thing. For sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, they know that there's something weird, but again, this is the first murder. This is not the second murder, like Laura Palmer. No. 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 Um. So they just thought that maybe like this is one murder off. You know, this is only one guy, and it was just one guy. But um, they don't know what's happening. They don't think it's supernatural, but because they imply that it's a Blue Rose uh, mystery, that it might be supernatural. It might be supernatural, yeah, yeah exactly. And yeah. there's going to be correlations and things like that. Because exactly, yeah. Chester Desmond does know about the Blue Rose, but he doesn't tell Sam Stanley. So he does. he's not telling the audience either, so it's for us to guess. Yeah, exactly. We're. It's like Sam Stanley's kind of the audience of the movie. Yeah. He kind of just stands there, if you notice. That's a great way of looking at it, actually. Yeah, yeah he, he kind of just stands there, like... Um, the missing pieces. Yes, I was just gonna say. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, the missing pieces <laughs> comes with this Blu-ray. It's really awesome. It's like an hour and a half of deleted scenes. That's great. I showed them a bit of it uh, yesterday, but uh, there's a scene where um, what's his name? Uh, Chris, Chester Desmond. Yeah. Chris Isaac. Or uh, Sam Chris Sam. Isaac. Yeah. Fights the sheriff. Sheriff Cable. Oh, sheriff Cable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this is only the missing pieces. They took this out of the movie. Man, it makes he... sense because it's very comedic. Yeah. But um, Sam Stanley just the whole time is just like sitting there like the audience is yeah. and just kind of like smirking. He's, he's, yeah. he's, he's enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, he's enjoying Cro- it. Arms crossed. Kind yeah, of, yeah. I'm like... <laughs> That's literally us while watching it, you know yeah. what I mean? It's a great scene. <laughs> oh, it's a really good scene. <laughs> Sheriff Cable has a punchable face anyway. Oh my god. percent but he's really funny. Well, even yeah. in the original, like, it, Sheriff, I guess Sheriff Cable, uh, he, he's actually a pretty big part. Like, you don't see that yeah. fight scene, but yeah. you see, like, you know, he's this guy who won't let the detectives see it's Teresa's odd. body. Hate the it's FBI. weird. It's weird. They're the complete opposite of the, the cops that are at Twin Peaks, because... The Twin Peaks cops, they're welcoming, they're like, oh, it's so great that there's an FBI here, yeah. I'm glad to yeah. work with you. You're right, it's in a complete opposite of what we're uh, used opposite. to seeing. Just like the diner that's in the town as well. Oh, the Very oh, different. complete shithole, yeah. No yeah. specials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there won't be any, sp- you want to hear the specials? You want to hear about our specials? We don't have any. Because you got no, Norm, Norma, who's the original waitress and uh, owner of the diner in um, Twin Peaks, and then yep. you got, I don't know this girl's name, but you know, she's still a great character. She's really funny. She's hilarious, yeah, but really the complete opposite, just the, the one where it's like, you know, get out of here kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Because like, they go to investigate her to ask about if they know anything about Teresa Banks. Yeah. Who used to work at the diner? Yeah, she worked over yeah. there for a bit. Yeah, uh, I think like it was only like a month. Yeah, uh, either a month or nine months or something. I like forget. That. It was a, it was like less than a year. Yeah. Like they didn't really know much about her. Yes, they know that she did cocaine and stuff like that. And Parallels, man. Yeah, we we do know uh, later on to the movie that we do find out Teresa Banks is a prostitute and that she knew Laura yes. Palmer. Yes. Yes. Oh. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So like, but basically, Teresa Banks um, was murdered by the same person who was murdered. Laura Palmer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And of course, we know at this point, after season two came out, um, that Leland Palmer murdered Laura Palmer. Yeah. So we know that Leland Palmer was at least part of this thing with Teresa Banks. Yes, yes. And Bob, of course, the entity yeah. that possesses the Leland. demon. And so we know that somehow Teresa Banks knows Laura Palmer, and we kind of find out slowly into the film 
that Teresa Banks also worked for One Eye Jax and that she's yeah. also like a prostitute and stuff like that. Yeah, like she's almost exactly like Laura Palmer. Yeah, yeah, they're very much like, like exactly. Um, I think he even said at one point that you kind of look like my daughter or something. Oh my God, he does. Yeah. Did yeah. you say that? Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. Um, yes, he did. Yeah. And there was a part in it where like he, uh, Teresa Banks was gonna meet up with him and two other girls, and right, he the found out the two other girls were. Um, it's Laura Palmer Laura and Palmer. her friend and Renette. Oh, yeah, Renette Planinsky. Plan- yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so who's a huge uh, he- part in Twin Peaks as well? Exactly. Yes. So that's how Leland Palmer kind of finds out that Laura Palmer is prostituting herself and stuff. Yeah, and he gets even more mad. Yeah, yeah. and crazy. That's the beauty. Not the beauty. The uh, the disturbing part of it too is Leland is uh, not the best person on the he's planet. A, he's a terrible person himself, but he gets mad at her for kind of being like a terrible person, like you know, selling your body. Exactly. But it's like, you're yeah, also he, a terrible person yourself. Oh yeah, so. he's a terrible yeah, fuck. He's doing terrible things to her. Yeah. Like, honestly. And also, like, Twin Peaks Firewalk Me is a, is a very um, depressing and gripping film, but it also does have a little beauty in it. It you know, is, yeah. It is, yeah. It, 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 it's terrible to see the things that happen in this movie. It's a very depressing movie. It's probably David Lynch's hardest movie to watch, for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Just because of how, like, uh, the subject matter is told and yeah. how real the PTSD is in this film. It's it it watching it. Lucas and I uh, together, we were disturbed. Like oh yeah, it's, it's like, very realistic. Like we're just like oh my god. That's another thing I really love about Twin Peaks is that like it doesn't take its supernatural into a goofy way. It no, yeah, makes no. it very like realistic and the subject matter very like, realistic. So they're not making like fun of it. No, you're right because every supernatural thing, even the original series, was very like taken with huge amounts. Of, like, mm-hmm. you know, serious, yeah. like, stride and, and stuff. About exactly. Fire like, Walk With Me, like, disturbing and all, but David Lynch had really good camera shots during this movie. Oh, my oh, God. Like, it's, it's a beautiful When they're in the red room, and, they have a, you know, he's looking at Jacques, and the camera looks like it's flying. Oh, yeah. Oh. You remember that part? Yeah, yeah. And, like, goes across the wall, it pans to Jacques, and it pans to Leo and all that. Yeah. Really good scene. Well, oh. e- even, like, the disturbing parts, and this is terrible, where, like, you know, Leland is kind of, like, you know, progressing towards, like, Sarah yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's it's disturbing, and you're sitting there, like, my God, this is awful. But, man, oh, man, like, the way it's shot is just, like, it's it's really, like, engaging in that kind of sense, it's too. It's like a POV. Like, oh. you're Laura Palmer. You're dealing yeah. with, with Bob right in your face. 100%. But it's incredibly edited how you see, like, Leland mm-hmm. turn to Bob, Bob to yeah. Leland and stuff. It's yeah. Very cool. Just to kind of, like, even, like, just before we, like, even to kind of just finish off with, like, the Chris Isaac story sort of thing. Yeah. The darkness, the way it's, like, shown, you know, you mentioned that a little bit before kind of thing. But Chris Isaac's character disappears. Yeah. yeah. After investing in the trailer park, which we see Harry Dean stand. Yeah. And then, well, amazing. So, another thing is, that's when they find the ring. Yeah, so this is yes. where the, the body, they go to the body around yep. Polanski. That's one of the things they see is that, that she's missing a ring on her finger because it had... Like kind of like a white line on her finger. Yeah, it yes. has the indent. Yes, yeah. basically. That looked like there was a ring in there. They asked, the, of course, the sheriff where the ring was, and he said a little, a little joke like, "Oh, like the there's phone. a the phone has a little ring." <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so the cop is just messing with him. They can't oh, find yeah, the ring, weird. so they go back to her, her her trailer park, and Chris Isaac looks around and he finds the ring, but it's like on the ground. On the ground. Under a trailer on like, a mountain. Underneath the like a mountain of dirt. Yeah, and then what happens? It cuts to black. Yeah. Yeah, it just cuts to black, and then it goes into um, Dale Cooper. Dale Cooper Dale. scenes with Gordon Cole and Phil Jeffries. Yes. Yeah. Which is huge. Oh, it, it's an important scene, because especially if you go into the return afterwards. Absolutely. It's an incredibly important scene. Yeah. To remember. Now yeah. this is where we're introduced to uh, Philip Jeffries. Yeah. Before that, I want to quickly talk about Chester Desmond. Mm-hmm. It cuts to black, right? Yeah. So it makes you wonder. He picks up the ring and. Kind of guessing that everybody's seen the original oh, yeah. Twin Peaks. So it makes you think, did he go to the Black Lodge? Did he? Or did he just like, what, what happened? My, my theory is that he probably got put in the Black Lodge and he might be living a Dale Cooper life. Maybe. Where he's just talking in small sentences. That might have happened or maybe even he just, nothing happened. Maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, again, like I said, he maybe the woodsman, woodsman took him. Oh, maybe. yes, the woodsman, And then yes. like, they're just like, yeah, you're done. Your your show's done. That's a great. That's a great. That's theory. it. Yeah. That's it from you. Which you, you don't also need you anymore. Yeah, you also start to see a little bit more in the return kind of thing. Uh huh. There is a uh, some few shots of a woodsman in in Firewalk. It's uh, 
I don't know if Don is the scene, but Das Boot, it's the cap. It's uh, the, your, the your German cap. Yeah, great actor, but uh, he's, he doesn't even say anything. He just sits no, there. No, of course not. It's he, hilarious. He's like, he's like doing these stupid little motions like this and like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this. That's an incredible scene. But yeah, yeah. so yeah, it starts with um, Dale Cooper just walking over to Gordon Cole. Yes, this is. Saying that he saw a dream. This is like the, se- the two thirds way of the movie. I was worried about today because of the dream I told you about. He's talking about the dream he had, right? Oh, and yeah. Then he walks back in the hallway and he's looking at the camera, going back to the camera room, seeing if he's like on the camera. He's yeah. going back and And then forth. we see uh, Philip Jeffrey leave the elevator. Yeah. Played by David and Bowie. Then, <laughs> of course, the best David Bowie. Hilarious. And then Dale Cooper, With a southern accent. As, oh, yeah. That's a great southern as, accent. As Philip Jeffrey walks in, Dale Cooper goes back to the camera, looks at it, goes back, and he sees himself. Yeah, and he sees Philip Jeffrey himself. Walk behind him. It was so freaky. It's oh, just it's the so most freaky. Twins Peaks, like Twins Peaks thing you can watch. And that. this is where we first hear for the first time ever uh, someone talk about Judy. Yeah, we don't talk about. And Judy. We don't we talk, talk about talk Judy. About <laughs> Judy. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about Judy. In fact, we're not going to talk about Judy at all. We're going to keep her out of it. Gordon, I know go. <laughs> and we don't know much about Judy at this time until the return, but amazing, David yeah. Lynch's ideas back then were that um, Judy was going to be Josie's sister. Josie, 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 yeah. Josie. Judy was going to be Josie's sister, and that was going to be the whole twist and stuff of like that, but then he kind of changed it to more of a supernatural thing, yeah. entity. Plus, but, we know what happened to Josie sort of in the original Josie series. Josie kind of, it's she weird. died. It, yeah, yeah, she's gone. She's gone. She died, you and know. she went into, she's part of the I, the lodge yeah. now, the um, the Great Northern. The Great Northern. She's part of the wood now and Freaky. stuff. Because I did say that, do you not remember in the original show, they did talk about how, like, um, there's stuff like, the wood is haunted or something like that. I yes. Um, that, that was important for, in my opinion, like Harry's kind of development too. A oh, hundred percent. Yes. You know, to see he had to get he had to get away from Josie. Let's be yeah. You know, sorry. He's but. such a better person than Josie. Is. <laughs> oh, without yeah. a doubt, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> She's like probably one of the most annoying evil characters in oh, the yeah. too yeah. sometimes. Oh sorry. yeah, what she does. Underrated. But I understand evil. like what she's doing. She's feeling bad. And she had a terrible life beforehand, but she was putting it all on Harry. Without like, a doubt, yeah. yeah. It started basically. Um, it was cutting between like a conversation with Philip Jeffries, Gordon Cole, Albert, of course. Oh yeah, Dale Albert. Cooper, yeah. of course. Albert, one of the best characters. Uh, absolutely. Um, and then they're editing it between the convenience store scene with uh, the man from another place and Bob, and uh, the shell fonts. And the woodsmen were there. We get introduced yeah. to the woodsmen for the first time. Yeah, they never talk about the woodsmen. They never talk about the jumping man ever in the script. The woodsmen never talk to you, ironically. Yeah, the yeah. woodsmen <laughs> never talk. The woodsmen don't appear again until the return. Yeah. Uh, the jumping man ma- appears in the return for like one second. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like it's yeah, it it's like, so random. You think it's going to be this big thing, but it's really not. It's huge. not. Like, Freaky looking character though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's all just, it kind of is just a circle going between the Black Lodge, the White Lodge. Oh, and, cool. Which, it, oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's, has it together, you know? We don't really get the White Lodge talked about really much in this one because this is a prequel, and this is more the darker side of mm-hmm. Twin Peaks. So it makes sense movie. that they kind of hint more towards the uh, Black Lodge anyways. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's great. I think if they made the sequel movies, they would have more talked about the White Lodge, but yeah. uh, because, it, again, they may have made a more lighter movie in the next one or something because this one's very dark. It's dark. It has all the dark characters. Yeah. It has all the characters. Yeah. But, you know. But then, yeah, and then uh, Philip Jeffrey says these things like, we don't talk about uh, Judy. We don't talk about Judy. Which is uh, really funny. Uh, there's an interview with David Lynch back in the 90s that he just says like, hey, can I say hi to my friend Judy? And they're like, who's Judy? He's like, oh, just a friend. <laughs> and then like, Never mentions Judy again, other than in the in this movie. And then, of course, Judy gets brought back up in the return. But yeah, he says the, Philip Jeffrey starts saying these things. Everything starts kind of glitching and everything with like yeah. the boy turning into a monkey and yeah, stuff that like was that. so weird because he's moving his mask first time you see him as the kid. Yeah, puts it on, moves it again. And it's magic the trick. Remember he does magic tricks. Yeah, oh yeah, he's the magician. Cream. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The cream corn. And then it, yeah, oh the yeah, the cream corn. corn. <laughs> and then he and then it cuts back and Philip Jeffrey's disappeared. They don't know where he went. Yeah, yeah. he disappeared again. And they're like, yeah. was he even he, even here? And then they check the cameras and he was. And he was. Yeah. Yeah. He was there. Um, but then right after that, cuts to Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks, yep. baby, and yeah. It's crazy how different the, the movie changes from that point on. Oh, the movie yeah. becomes a lot more bleak it, and depressing. And depressing. If you think and about it, it's like the build-up. 
Oh, 100%. And it's like the second half of the movie is just the straight fucking dark depressing. Oh, it's it's the hell. Well, it's well, the because hell. Well, even the, the aesthetic completely changes too. You exactly. stop going yeah. from like this dark room and stuff like that and these kind of crazy moments with Dale Cooper. Yeah. And you go to like Twin Peaks and it's all, yeah. you know, it's vibrant looking, it's colorful. Yeah. But you know the darkness that lies oh, in, lies between in what you're about to watch, you know. And I think the second half is super realistic. Amazing. Like, I don't think anything in the second half could not happen. In real life, honestly, most of it. Not at all. We learned some things. There's that's... a few things where it's like, oh, that's definitely a dream. Oh, but yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. It's like that makes it realistic enough that these things could just be dreams. It's and not true. At this point, the audience knows what Twin Peaks is about anyway. Yeah. Kind of thing. You know the dreams 100%. have meanings and stuff oh, like that. 100%. And, 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 yeah, we just see Laura Palmer walking to school with her friend Donna and running into her boyfriend. The Do- Donna? Donna is replaced. <laughs> uh, yeah, the new Donna. Laura Flynn Boyle. J- was she? Why did she not come she back? She was just scheduling mm-hmm. issues. I, I think, think she was scheduling mad issues. As well. She's also just not a great person. Yeah, she does seem to have a bit of an ego. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. she does. <laughs> yeah. Um, a big forehead as well. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger than the new Donna for sure. <laughs> um, but the new I like the new Donna. She's great. Yeah, yeah, she's so great. She's yeah. way better. She's not as cringy. She plays along with the darkness pretty. Uh, yeah, 100%. pretty well too. You know, Cheryl Lee at the beginning seems like a very happy person. That's what I like about it. That you uh, see her as more of a happy person. Cheryl Lee was good and really good in Twin Peaks the original, yes. but this time her acting was incredible. Incredible. She can go from very happy to laughing and stuff like that to fucking dark, petrified, petrified, and yeah. her, and t- crying. crying and. And you just see that this character is suffering kind of thing mm-hmm. with her, the way she acts out. It makes it feel... Yeah, she seems happy, and then you see her go to the bathroom and just snort some cocaine. Oh, so yeah. Literally, it's... It, oh, my God. Yeah. It's crazy. Amazing scene, too, but... Um, you can see her dealing with PTSD and drugs and alcohol. A huge abuse. And, and that's the everything. thing. It goes to yeah. kind of show the symptoms of what, like, abuse does to people. And exactly. How you act out without wanting oh. to show what's happening. Also, yeah. her, like, just selling her body as well. Uh-huh. It's like oh, no, yeah. no respect for herself. Yeah, we, no. we, we learn who Laura Palmer... We already learned from the show, but we really see who yeah, she is. That's yeah, that's the thing. Like, you didn't what really did. know a ton about her in the show. Yeah. And this, and this movie really shows you um, how who she is as a person. Because, yeah. like... Absolutely. In the original show, you do know what kind of happened to Laura Palmer that night, mm-hmm. but you don't know what happened throughout that entire week. And what brought it to that? Yeah, you know? it's exactly. It's all kind of like in your mind. Yeah, you know? exactly. Because most of the characters weren't there for that. No, you know, like James didn't even know what happened. <laughs> he just saw her run away. That's it. Yeah, that's a. I like seeing Laura. Laura. Oh, sorry, Laura Palmer's um kind of relationships with all the other guys. And yeah, stuff. Like, yeah. Just like wow, she's you know? like three or four different relationships. <laughs> I know. <Yep. laughs> and when um <laughs> she talks to Jacques and then those uh you know kind of Midwestern guys come walking over, it's like I'm book. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you can see that like she's she's a prostitute. But, yeah. but of course, we see all the old characters back too. We see you know Bobby and Mike chilling in their car, kind of thing. Yep. You yeah. know, and Bobby kills a guy in this movie. Yeah, that shocked me. Yeah, I was like so okay. Basically, like Bobby's of course dating Laura, and Laura's only dating him to get drugs. To get drugs. Yep. Basically, the whole thing. The He's deal. got the money. He wants to help her. He thinks she's hot. He wants to date her. She's <laughs> the most popular girl in the school. In school. Yeah. And, and he's um, pretty popular too, obviously. Yeah, he's yeah. the quarterback. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so they go and get cocaine from this one guy. Laura Palmer's already high on something. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, the guy is about to give him this football, but then the guy has a gun. He's about to shoot Bobby, and Bobby shoots him first. Yeah. Yes. And he kills the guy. It was actually, it surprised me because I'm like, damn, Bobby killed somebody. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. it, it's great because it kind of like uh, contrasts with like the first pilot episode too yeah. because Bobby is sort of accused of like you know yeah. or, or, or a suspect in the Laura Palmer murders yep. but you know obviously it's like he committed his own but he, it's Dale Cooper is like you know he says he's innocent he didn't do it sort of thing but obviously Bobby did kill someone well, so he, did he committed it's great. the murder with uh, Laura Palmer when she was there oh yeah that's yeah. actually but he true. didn't kill her she witnessed it yeah. she witnessed it yeah. yeah but she didn't actually do it yeah, the whole well, storyline of like Laura Palmer with her, you know, all the Twin Peaks characters is great. It's oh, great. Oh, a hundred percent. It's 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 brilliant. Even uh, Bobby's friend Mike had a funny little appearance again. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's I Mike. Like, he's I like Mike, Mike. You know. Yeah, yeah he's he's not like a super like cool guy, but he's funny. He's he's entertaining. Yeah. yeah. Like he's not supposed to be a good guy. <laughs> James is you know James. He's uh, he's kind of your little lovey dreamy sort of uh, motorcycle boy. Motorcycle guy. Yeah, he's really the kind of cool, 
like rebellious. Rebellious, guy. yeah. yeah. Um, kind of has maybe even something hidden behind him. Yes. Uh, now she, he is Laura's like true lover, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. She really did love him. He's just kind of stupid. stupid. Yeah. Yeah. He just for some reason is following her, even though she is, fall. She's going into the darkness. She's like Donna. Donna is following Laura. And they're all going into the darkness together. Everyone is deteriorating and going to the dark. Yeah, like you're right. Exactly. And uh, Laura is dealing with a lot that people don't even know. She hasn't told anyone. The only person she told was this guy named Harold, who she hardly even knew. Harold. Oh, um, we almost forgot to mention Harold. Harold Smith. Harold Smith. Can't go outside. A.K.A. No, no. Laura Palmer's diary holder. Yeah, he's yeah. in the original show. He's basically this guy who just doesn't leave his house. He yeah. said he's allergic to some sort of <laughs> sunlight or something. Sunlight or whatever, yeah. He's he's like really kind of like like creepy, but it's not like bad because he's kind of like he's, he's poetic. He's, he's kind of poetic, yeah. Yeah, like he's not like a guy you'd really want to trust. No, no. <laughs> but Laura Palmer finds a, the good in everyone, and so she trusted him with her diary. Yeah. She didn't, because, especially since he doesn't see anyone except for her. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. And also, he likes to keep. I guess in the original show, he talks about how. People just like go to him for and tell him his like there's, their there's, stories, their stories and yeah. secrets, and he Things. keeps them. Now, even in the return, he didn't have the biggest appearance. Like, no. How long was he on screen for again? Like, uh, I would say around three to four minutes. Maybe, maybe like, in the return. Oh, Jesus! No, uh, uh, Firewalk, hey, Firewalk with me. Sorry. Yeah, Firewalk with me. His scene was oh, really small, <laughs> but it was but it was really good. impactful. Because it was great. One yeah. more Palmer is you know crying, but then she's like, "Fire, walk with me." And, and then and then mm-hmm. it flips to her, and she has like the you know she kind of looks dead so with the makeup on. Creepy. Yeah. And it's kind of like Bob is getting closer and closer. Yes. To her. Well, and she was also telling him about Bob, and he yeah. doesn't seem to believe her that this Bob exists. And Which, then he sees what she just became there for a second. Yeah, and he started to believe. And, and from See. And from what we know, Bob has been around forever. Always oh, with ages. ages. He, he was ages. there since Leland was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, up at his cottage when he's a, you know, he like to play with fire kid and throws the matches at him. Yeah. Uh, and inhabits him then, like possesses him. Yeah. But it makes you think that he's an entity, a demon. So how long has he been around? For? Yes. That's the thing we don't really find out until the return. Did yep. he possess somebody before Leland? He probably has. I know him and Mike would go out and do bad stuff together. Yeah, Yeah, Mike is a great character to mention, too, because he was excellent. Oh, my God. The actor is great. Again, his small scenes that... um, This is different Mike, by the way. Yeah, this is the (laughs) Mike, the one-armed man. One-armed man, yeah. um, Who basically (laughs) is kind of... He he was a... First, he was a bad guy. He would do stuff with Bob. He was friends with Bob. Mm -hmm. And then he kind of now become a protector. Yeah. He's like the antagonist of Bob, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's kind of against Bob. Yeah. Uh, That's what I like. Can I go to the scene where uh, Leland is driving? Oh, yeah. So, (laughs) Leland is driving, right? And he's kind of stuck in between these two cars. And then somebody's just following behind going crazy. And then... The guy turns around, goes into the other lane, and goes right up beside his car, and you see it's Mike, the one-armed man, and he's like, look, look, he has the ring, and he's freaking yeah, out, he's the and then Leland's freaking out, but Laura Palmer's in the car uh, next to her father, and she's freaking out, because she's scared, right? Yeah, and she's like, who is this guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, look at the ring! And he and she's like, why do I recognize this guy? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she noticed it too, exactly. Yeah, maybe and then Leland's freaking out, burning the tires Amazing. and the engine yeah. as well, and yeah. he's like, go, go, go! And she starts to see another part of her father's thing. It's a sad but beautiful story. It yeah. is. It is. It's it's just the most like disturbing thing you'll watch, but it's like your eyes are glued kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's the reason why people were a little dismissive about this movie compared to the show was it didn't have that campiness, that kind of goofiness that the original show had. Yeah. yeah. For, for a while it did, and then you get to the twin pe- actual Twin Peaks part, and people were like, yeah. oh, it's not, you know, it's very serious and just and depressing. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you know what, though? But if people watched any other David Lynch movie, they would have understood that. Like, <laughs> like Blue Velvet? Yeah, Blue Velvet. Uh, Dennis Hopper in there? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Dennis Hopper's character is very much like Bob. Yeah. Honestly, there's actually, a huge parallel in that movie. It's, uh, it's like... Blue Velvet's a build up to uh, Twin, Twin Peaks. Peaks because it's like oh, the log, the log town, and then <laughs> Comic Glock's already in there. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is just a a great film. You you see the beginning of the week where Laura Palmer is still alive to the end where she um, tragically dies by yeah. the murder of that exactly. Leland Palmer puts on her. 
we see yeah. him kill her in this one where in the show the only scene we saw was Bob killing yeah Bob one, Bob. he's like stabbing her and yeah. it's from the viewpoint of um what's the friend's name Ron Polanski Ron Polanski That scene is so freaky because oh. she, Laura Palmer looks like she's possessed in there. Because she's yeah. screaming, right? And the light's flashing. And she's got blood in her teeth and all that. She's freaking out. And then you just see Bob going crazy. Yeah. But yeah. It, it's, like I said, so freaky because it looks like they're both possessed. But in Firewalk, we, f we find out that um, Mike comes up with the ring. Doesn't try to mm -hmm. save her. That's the thing. Yeah. Doesn't even try to save her. He just gives her the ring so then she doesn't get possessed by Bob. Yes. And he, he that's the only reason he's there. He's not really a hero or anything. He's really just there so then Bob can't do anything more. Yeah. That's the thing. He's almost like just he like is, a semi-protector kind he's of. A road, yeah, like he's, he's a roadblock to Bob. Yes. Yes, exactly. exactly. He, he gives her the ring so then she can be protected and basically she'll be... She will be stuck in the lodge for the rest of her life. Oh. Yeah. That's the one set. <laughs> man, oh man. Yeah, it's just... The Ring was a great introduction to the story of Twin Peaks and shows, like, oh, you yeah. know, like, the difference between the real world and what is perceived yeah. as, like, the, the lodge, of course. You and know? Yeah. Thing, it makes you think, like, could this be reality as well? You never yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's always, uh, you know, even, like, as we're kind of building up in the story and we see Laura Palmer, you know, hanging around with the bad crowd like Jacques and uh, yeah. Leo Leo's storyline in this was awesome oh yeah like he's Leo he's your typical Leo he's a douchebag yeah you know he's a abuser a terrible person as well really yeah, yeah we see that he was kind of part of the whole like kind of kidnapping of Laura Palmer and yes and it's interesting to see his behind the scenes of what happened mixed with Jacques yeah. mixed with Ronette who was there Ronette who also works at the um What's it called? One Eye Jacks. Ah, One Eye Jacks. Yeah, One Eye Jacks. One Eye Jacks. It's and that scene where they're in the bar, of course, you know, it's a beautiful scene. It's it's it brutal. It's but really it's, brutal. The music in the background, you know, it's just great, uh, yeah. with the red lighting and just you know. It's it's beautiful. You you see Laura. That's when it's like Laura like is about to like die. Like she's she's already sealed yeah. her fate basically. She's yeah. already uh she's got like a hog tie. You know. On. Yeah. yeah. And she's like Leo one time he and then he he leaves right. But um, then Leland walks in, and then she starts freaking out because she knows yeah. that she's a. She's so basically, screwed. Leo gets like bashed in the head and Jock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they both um, they don't even they didn't even see Leland, and that's why they didn't even yeah, they, any any murder or anything. They actually will n were not part at all, but the murder. But they were gonna do stuff to Laura Palmer beforehand. Yeah, yeah. Like she was tied up in. Uh, yeah, they were going bad. to do some bad things to her, but Leland came over and and bash their heads and so then they can you know fall asleep get unconscious and then he can kidnap Laura Palmer and Ron yeah. Polanski so he can murder them exactly because he because Laura was going to tell everyone he thought that everyone he was going to tell everyone that he raped her all yeah. the time and stuff um, I want to ask him though throughout the whole movie you can tell Leland is getting closer and closer and closer because it's the build up yeah. like the build up when she sees Bob in the house she leaves like we talked about before then he leaves she starts thinking, and then Bob uh, having his way with her, and then it turns into Leland, so he's even closer. And mm. then when it's her, Jacques, Leo, and Ronald Pulaski at the cabin, you see Leland walk up to the window. So he's right there now. Oh, he yeah. is right there. And then takes her to the train, and, you know, her fate is sealed. Ray Wise does such an incredible job as the villain. He does. Yeah. He's a great actor. He is so good at playing someone that's crazy but also has kind of a light side it's yeah. hard because deep in there for me Leland was always one of my favorite characters and it yeah. feels almost guilty saying that from after after watching fire after finding out that he was the killer it's like ooh maybe not when he kills Jacques his yeah. hair goes white oh yeah because oh, yeah. he's turning into Bob he's turning into Bob slowly turning into him did you guess that it was Leland um uh, I had guesses here and there I, I was very stuck on the hair thing yeah 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 was the one no I did his I didn't. Who do you think it was? Hair. Um, I just thought it was like the entity of Bob just going around killing everyone, but then I was like, no, it makes sense. it made sense when we lived in well, Jock. Yeah. His hair, I think, went time. like white, and Frank Selma that got uh, plays out Bob. His is more like a dirty gray, so yeah. that's why I wasn't too sure. <laughs> you know, and well, it's like if you want to really become him, it's just <laughs> white. Like he didn't, he it turned white on its own. Yeah, I know. 
that's the thing. Like, it it probably was white for Bob before, but he was just a dirty guy, so he yeah. probably said dirty. dirty <laughs> yeah, stuff. probably. But yeah, the movie literally ends with her death, and it just cuts to the the pink room, and it shows an angel. Oh yeah. yes, oh, from yes, the picture in the room. In the red room. Yes, it does. And yeah, and that angel was in in the in the her bedroom with her yeah. in, a, in a painting, watching over her. And, yeah. it, and it slowly fades away. Basically, yeah, it was fading away, saying that you're you're stuck here. That's the symbolism to show that she's not protected anymore, right? Yeah. Like she's kind of I screwed. Did, yeah. yeah. Um, she isn't saved yet. You, you can tell because no one can really help her. Like Sarah Palmer, who was yeah. making the movie, can't help her. But you know. Dale Cooper is her next angel. Dale know? Cooper is yeah. her Yep, yep. And then it cuts down to just a monkey, a zoomed in a close-up of a monkey. <laughs> yes. And it just says, Judy. Judy. The movie go and yeah. And, then, and no one knows what the hell Judy is. <laughs> we don't talk about Judy. Yeah, we don't talk, we about, don't Judy. talk about Judy. But I had until, a great... Until uh, the next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until, <laughs> we're we're going to be making a Twin Peaks The Return video very soon, and hopefully the next few months probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had a great time talking with you guys. Oh, I, you, do you guys have any quick final thoughts of, like, just, you know, like... Twin, Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me like people complain about it but it is Twin Peaks it's great it's amazing it's a great movie I'm Shot just gonna off. say that it's a really good film I think you gotta watch the original show first mm-hmm. and then 100%. watch this but 100%. it's really good it dives deeper into psychological yeah. stuff like PTSD and abuse yeah. and stuff and, and it's way more prim- normal than you think it is yeah it, it's it's a very realistic film even with that supernatural stuff in it it has a lot of realism in it absolutely so I really like about it and I think it is David Lynch's out of his movies, it's my favorite, personally. Um, oh, it's probably one of mine, too. Maybe Mulholland Drive, but this one is probably number two so far. Yeah? Yeah. And probably your favorite so far? Yes. <laughs> yeah. From You've Seen Blue Velvet and... Yeah, you've uh, only seen Blue Velvet. Blue Velvet's amazing. It is a great film it as well. It is great, yeah. Um, but I highly recommend it, and we will see in the next video. We're hoping yeah. we'll be doing a, now a Friday the 13th breaking. Yes. Yes. I'm excited for that. So we're going to do that very soon. I only got to watch Jason X next, so that's the last one I got to watch. I got to watch literally X, like 10 or so. <laughs> that's going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm excited to see your uh, opinions on that. Thanks, man. Except for the New York one. <laughs> Except for X as well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video.